Hello, everyone. Uh, while Anirvan shares um, his screen, let me quickly introduce uh, myself. As uh, mentioned, I am a product manager at ThoughtWorks. What that means is that I work with our clients um, in helping them uh, imagine um, and plan for the right product. And as the product is being built and as it rolls out, make sure uh, that we are uh, continuously evolving, uh, reinventing, and solving the key business case. Um, I have written a book on product management. It's available on Amazon. Do read. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, Anirvan. Thanks, Dinkar. Uh, I'm audible, right? Yeah, I think I'm. Uh, hi. So uh, I'm Anirvan. Uh, like Dinkar, I'm part of our uh, sort of product and advisory practice. Uh, I tend to focus more upon uh, digital strategy, digital transformation, uh, things like that. Uh, and uh, I think platforms are, are tremendously exciting and uh, really looking forward to sort of sharing our thoughts uh, and I guess our excitement uh, with you over the next uh, few minutes. So without further ado, let me dive into this. So what we want to cover in this talk is we want to start off with what's a platform and why should you care? I think you will find that uh, there are about as many definitions of what is a platform as there are people. And I think uh, some definitions are more interesting or more thought provoking than others. So we will look into that. Uh, I think we'll spend some time looking at some of the important ways in which platform strategy is at odds with conventional business thinking. And there is a, there's a gap there that is important to call out, which is of course the main theme of this presentation. And then in the end, of course, we will share some takeaways and like, like some concluding remarks uh, to leave the audience with. So the first part, what's a platform and why should you care? So the thing about platforms, right, which I think all of us recognize is that they disrupt. I think what's interesting is how do they disrupt? And when you look at, uh, let's say, a Google, a Facebook, an Amazon, I think uh, like an easy answer is they just disrupt by being super awesome and super agile and super innovative, which are all true. But I think it's perhaps useful to look at that a little bit more analytically than that. And one way to think about this is that whenever you have somebody leading an industry, like take a Nokia, right? Uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, leading the handset industry. Uh, whenever somebody leads an industry, they control certain key levers, right? It could be their brand, it could be the distribution network, it could be their scales of, you know, how at the, the manufacturing scale that they have, et cetera, et cetera. It could be any, uh, there could be multiple sources of uh, this, let's say these levers, but these levers act as an entry barrier. So if you are, um, if you are a competitor trying to say, well, I like what that company over there is doing, I want to sort of break in, uh, these levers are very hard to replicate, they're too expensive, they just take too much of time. And so those levers protect the incumbents, their ability to capture profit, to keep on leading the industry. And so these levers are basically, you know, what prevents an industry from becoming a commoditized, uh, you know, market, right? So the, these, those, these levers are always very important. Now, what a platform does is that it commoditizes those levers in one way or the other. And we'll talk about a couple of examples uh, very shortly. But a platform makes those levers a lot less important. It allows other people to basically bypass those levers, those entry barriers, right? Allowing new competition to flood into the market or by making the incumbents uh, a, lot more, a lot more irrelevant to the industry, right? So, so that's what a platform does. Now, how do they do it? Let's look at some examples. So, for example, take hospitality, right? Now, if you want to uh, build great hotels, you have limited spaces, right? So location is scarce. And the, the leading chains, right? I don't know, your Hilton's or your Four Seasons or whoever came in first, they would control those prime locations. So let's say you want to step into, I don't know, Piccadilly Circus in London. There is very limited real estate and the little bits of real estate, which is suitable for a hotel, they're all taken up by these incumbents. And if you want to now acquire that, it's going to be really expensive for you to do so. But along comes Airbnb and says, well, why do I need to have all the rooms staying you know, put together? The moment I deconstruct the hotel into much smaller living units, you know, there is no longer a scarcity of space. And so uh, Airbnb sort of commoditizes scarcity of real estate as a, as a power lever, right? As an entry barrier. 
you could look at similarly telecoms where if you wanted to offer telecom services you needed to control spectrum and spectrum was scarce but along came apple and said that well i do not need to use spectrum i can you know use uh, rather than depending upon spectrum i will use basically just data as a pipe and over that i will stream multiple applications multiple types of you know features and functionality suddenly making the spectrum a, a much more passive uh, let's say resource and and diluting the roles of uh, telecom companies in that ecosystem and we can talk about payments where you know we'll be hearing from uh, from renu uh, from ptm uh, later today where uh, Pat you know ptm for example came in and it uh, made it a lot less you know uh, it made if you are trying to accept payments you are far less dependent upon let's say visa or a mastercard or those traditional sort of you know, incumbents uh, it just completely created an infrastructure to bypass those guys etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we can talk about media but i will just move forward i think hopefully that idea is clear now for this definition then what is a platform so i would like to think of a platform as a sustainable in the sense that you can keep on doing it right without bleeding to death uh, profitability wise so it's sustainable and it's scalable so you can do it at really large scale uh, it's a way of adding value to third parties uh, this is a fairly in a sense non intuitive revolutionary thought if you're sitting inside a conventional strategy department in an enterprise right it is platforms are first and foremost about adding value to third parties not to yourself and not even directly to your end users and we'll talk about that and to add that value what you're doing is you're reducing risk you're reducing complexity you're reducing friction right you are in general making the world more efficient in some important sense and while you are doing so you are making sure that you retain enough value and power for yourself right so that's what a platform is it is not the only definition i think there are other very you know viable legitimate definitions but for the purpose of i think how we want to drive this conversation and this edition of converge i think this is a this is the kind of i think definition that uh, is an important one so now how do you add value we say we add value to third parties where there are different ways for example a marketplace business is basically connecting buyers and sellers it's aggregating that and by doing so if you are an independent supplier or an independent buyer it is making it a lot easier for you to sort of uh, you know manage the discovery process right or the transaction process it is reducing transaction friction uh customer acquisition right uh, again it's 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 very similar i actually wanted to call out uh when i said market access i was actually thinking about the alibaba example right where alibaba made it really easy for people who have never stepped uh, foot inside china to be able to access that you know enormous supplier base and to be able to use it to sort of uh, get lower costs and and a more diverse array of suppliers uh, customer acquisition is when you are able to put suppliers and buyers together and it's you are you are reducing the cost of any one entity to acquire uh, you know customers UX funnel optimization, Shopify, for example, right? I mean, anybody can put up a design, anybody can put up a shop front, but to do it well, to know how to convert that efficiently, that's actually not a very, very common skill. And if a lot of that is already baked into the product, then that makes life a lot easier, right? So that is the reason why you would want to go to Shopify because you know those risks are taken care of you. Uh, technology complexity, right? I mean, Android, for example. I mean, Apple knew how to uh, how to create a smartphone. uh using software as your primary sort of let's say uh lever but a lot of the other people did not but google had technology sort of you know uh, the the required technology skills google uh, obviously acquired android and then it outsourced android so that it could you know uh reduce the the let's say the gap between apple and the competitors like i don't know huawei or 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 whoever else right so it it made that a lot lot easier samsung of course so so these are all examples and and this is certainly not an exhaustive list you could have a lot more things but the idea is that figure out how to take away friction from the marketplace and you might have the seed of a platform which brings us to the thought that if you were to flip this all together right if you are an enterprise and you are not a platform how do you start becoming a platform well you think about this as you know if platforms are all about value addition to an ecosystem you know what do i already do which i'm excelling at and how do i find a way to package that and expose that so that i start creating value to other entities right and obviously i need to digitalize i need to sort of do this in a way which is scalable and sustainable we talked about that but 
I start by looking at, as an enterprise, what are my core competencies and who else has a need for those core competencies? How do I use those core competencies to either protect my own role in the industry or to you know, uh, maybe break into other industries? So uh, AWS, I think, famously did that. Uh, they solved infrastructure for themselves and then they offered it to everybody else. Goldman Sachs, uh, for those who have been following FinTech News, uh, for example, is now offering banking as a service. And we'll say a little bit more about that shortly. Uh, Android, I've already talked about. Uh, I think John Deere is another famous example where they are a you know a manufacturer of tractors and whatnot, but they took that uh, they used IoT to create a platform on top of that and to connect uh, their users together. So there there are you know examples, but we would not pretend that this is easy because uh, there's a lot of institutional unlearning that needs to happen. The way institutions use metrics and other things, you know, a lot of things have to change. And so let's talk about that next. So let's talk about then when we talk about institution and learning so that an institution can start uh, becoming, can start setting itself up to become a success at platform creation, what does that look like? So the, I think there are three fundamental shifts uh, that were called out by uh, uh, you know, an article in uh, Harvard Business Review about two or three years ago. So the first one is that in a conventional business, you're thinking about resource control, right? It's how many stores do I own? How many, let's say, factories do I own? How much raw material do I own, et cetera? If you're thinking about tangible resource control as a primary way that you sort of build power, you build advantage. Uh, whereas in a platform mindset, you're thinking a lot more about how do I allow other people to interact more efficiently? So I'm the orchestrator. I'm not necessarily the person who controls everything, does everything. And that's a different mindset because your success metrics change what you're optimizing for changes or needs to change. The second one is internal optimization. And I'm always thinking about my costs, my revenues, my market share, my profitability, right? You're always optimizing as an internal function. Whereas in a platform mindset, you are thinking about, for example, uh, let's say how much more efficient have I made it possible for uh, maybe two different actors in my ecosystem to interact, right? How much risk have I taken out of their business? Uh, how much um, say faster have I helped them scale? So you're much more focused upon those external interactions and that's a mindset shift. And then that leads us then, I guess, if you were to summarize that, what we are saying is in a platform, uh, in a traditional mindset, because while I'm trying to optimize uh, my own business, my North Star is my customer. I'm always thinking about my customer, their needs, you know, uh, their, let's say, um, their preferences for what they want to buy and what they of course want to buy from me. In ecosystem value, I'm thinking a lot more about entities who are not customers. I'm thinking about people who will consume my APIs. I'm thinking about, you know, how will they make money after they've paid me the fees that I want them to pay to me, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot more focused upon that network than it is about just the user as in that sense, a single point of focus. And the implications of these shifts, right? Uh, while, you know, some of this thinking has been out there, it is probably not anywhere near mainstream inside enterprises. A lot of enterprises think about digitalization in the context of how do I serve my existing customers better? It's not really a, this ecosystem mindset which has yet established itself. And this at the end of the day is at the heart of the business versus platform strategy disconnect. So uh, the, um, I'm just sorry, I'm just checking one thing. Yeah. So. I think some of the key sort of, uh, if you look at the differences between this funnel, right? When you think about creating a, a platform, you have to set a goal, you have to experiment, uh, you have to sort of go beyond that to establishing trust, in, which is very important in a platform context. How do you cooperate, et cetera? So we'll talk about some of these things and uh, just on the goal setting front, right? If you're optimizing for revenue and profit, if you are uh, optimizing to sort of capture value and maximize profits as early as possible, if you're focused upon your customers, because that's the end goal of your digitalization. And the product is what you sell to customers, right? So whatever you do is coming from that place versus in a platform, you're optimizing for how do I stay relevant to as many actors as possible? How do I build defensive, let's say, moats around me? Right? To use that analogy um, from Google. Uh, and yeah, we have talked about removing fiction, so I will not do that again. Um, so the thing about this is, the way innovation happens inside enterprises can be very anti-platform. So that uh, 
visual over there is the Starbucks app. I think some of you might recognize that. The Starbucks app is a shining example of success as far as digitalization goes. Uh, you know, if you look at the share of payments to the Starbucks app, I mean, that's just an incredible graph that you see right over there in terms of consistency. I think one third of their payments is now, you know, through a closed loop system. And to many people, this is what a you know, effective digitalization looks like. And this is, of course, amazing. So um, we are not trying to knock that. This is, this is super important. But what you're hoping is, okay, uh, my customer, how do I serve my customer superbly? Right? That's where that is coming from. This is what uh, Goldman Sachs is trying to do. So they are trying to uh, create Marcus as well as Marcus is, is, a, is there actually, uh, let's say, Neobank. Uh, but they are also offering uh, transaction banking as a service uh, to people, uh, to, to other institutions. And this quote is, I think, just perfect. It says that the way Amazon Web Services was conceived, it was an internal product, but then it was also an externalized product to offer the same benefits to any company. And Goldman Sachs says that they want to do the same thing for financial institutions, right? That mindset, right, Goldman Sachs is there, but a lot of companies are not there yet because they're, they're not thinking hard enough about these things. And so this is where there's a lot of conflict still for businesses. And to just talk about that a little bit more, actually, there is one, one more thing I want to just call out before I hand this over to um, Dinkar. So I want to say that um, when you start doing this for, um, uh, for platforms, a lot of the product thinking toolkit around lean startups and experimentation, they are also user-centric, right? They are also user-centric. So uh, how do you articulate your assumptions about your ecosystem, uh, you know, uh, participants? What do they want? How will they behave? Those are not, you know, often called out, and those are not explicitly tested, and that's and that's a problem. And often they are kind of second order things. Like, you know, it's very difficult to test how your ecosystem will will sort of behave until your primary offering to your end users is not very clear. So there are complications there. But today those things are not, you know, the experimentation discipline and culture around platform innovation is nowhere as mature as it is around, let's say, product innovation, and that's a problem. And then one final thing here uh, before I hand over is that from a user centricity point of view, right? Uh, trust is important, but trust is often, unless you've done something to explicitly violate that trust, customers will give you that trust, right? People will try out a new app, they will try out, let's say a new service. So you have that, so it's important, but you kind of have it until you lose it, except in some categories where it is the primary decision factor. But in an ecosystem trust, trust is a different meaning. It's not just, are you competent today? Should I use the services today? It's also, will you treat me well tomorrow? Right. If you look at Twitter, for example, Twitter once encouraged other application developers to innovate on top of Twitter. And then they went and they cannibalized those services and they lost a lot of that trust. Uh, OYO, for example, right, uh, I mean, has been in the news for uh, exploiting some of their hoteliers and the hotelier lobby has kind of been fighting OYO, et cetera. So, so trust in that sense is very important. If, you're, um, if your ecosystem does not trust you, they will not really participate in your, in your platform. And so how do, you, how do you sort of protect that trust? How do you reassure people that you will continue to be a responsible partner? Those are important questions. So on that note, Dilkar, over to you. Uh, thanks, uh, Anirvan. Um, so uh, while uh, platform strategy is such an exciting thing and uh, there's uh, apparently a lot of value in it, uh, why isn't everyone successful at it? Uh, why isn't everyone doing it? And uh, why aren't we seeing a platform solve each and every problem? Uh, what I want to talk about is uh, three fundamental disconnects between um, the business strategy and uh, the platform strategy that business is trying to put in. Uh, what is happening is that uh, the business strategy is very much focused on increasing the value for the shareholders, the company, the employees, uh, your partners, and your customers. They could be paying or they could not, uh, they wouldn't be. And uh, what uh, makes actually a platform thrive is a whole ecosystem. And uh, I'll talk a little more about it. The second fundamental disconnect um, that's um, uh, happening today uh, is, uh, Anirvan, uh, thanks. Um, is around uh, realignment. Um, so uh, one thing we, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time working with large enterprising help, uh, enterprises, uh, helping them create these strategies. 
they, they, there is an openness to realign, uh, but uh, what's actually needed is a complete transformation of how they do things. I'll talk about some cases and I'll uh, talk about uh, what do we mean, uh, especially by re realignment um, over uh, transformation. And the third one, uh, another one uh, is uh, gatekeeping versus courage. Um, businesses uh, tend to be risk averse. Uh, they want to control their environment. They want to control um, their ecosystem. They want to control the supply chain. They, they essentially want to be very careful who comes in and what goes out. Uh, while as uh, in a platform that kind of uh, immediately stands um, against the whole openness uh, aspect of the platform, uh, Anirvan called out the need of value creation. So what is really needed is the ability to take courageous decisions. Um, on uh, the first topic uh, that I uh, talked about, the first disconnect, uh, the platform initiatives uh, rarely focus uh, on ecosystem. What does that mean, right? So when businesses uh, start and they think that they are doing an, you know platform thing, they suddenly open up and instead of building a uh, platform and ecosystem, they actually just create quote unquote, an open software or an open environment or maybe uh, they end up creating um, an uh, open um, uh, fork. But rather than bringing everyone together, uh, they kind of miss out on that. Also, uh, you know, Apple kind of started their journey buying being closed, then they moved to a uh, platform and the success was the uh, App Store. Google kind of opened up Android to everyone, it went in all kind of crazy directions and then they kind of brought everyone together, uh, created that ecosystem, failure to engage. I don't know how many of you remember Nokia came up with OV, but it was, hey, I need to have a platform kind of mindset. No one went anywhere um, near OV, no one applications were coming up. A uh, lot of examples like this, um, you know, uh, if you are creating a platform and you're focusing a lot on one side. For example, Google Health focused a lot on the consumer side, but they did not create trust with uh, the service providers like healthcare providers, insurance providers. The platform didn't go uh, anywhere. And uh, you know, uh, there is this uh, urgency to quickly uh, look for profit, uh, do things that really don't help in getting up the critical mass. Uh, Bill Point was created by eBay uh, was an eBay company, should have done awesome in payments, uh, but they were so focused on controls that it was creating a barrier for uh, entry and PayPal came in, uh, totally dominated the field and at some point got uh, bought over. So, uh, you know, um, uh, those who have read uh, Cash 22 will remember Milo used to say everyone has a share. So if you're building an ecosystem, you have to think of everyone and you have to make sure that everyone gets a share. And that means your competition, people who are collaborating with you today. You know, one of the uh, things I'm looking forward from uh, uh, a follow-up conversation is when the Paytm uh, team talks about their journey. UPI is a rival, but on Paytm, you can actually pay uh, using UPI. That, that's a very interesting uh, dynamics there. Uh, we have a hands-on workshop uh, later that talks about envisioning uh, an ecosystem. Hopefully you can attend it and understand uh, what steps you can take to make sure that you envision the whole uh, ecosystem. Anirvan, the next one. Uh, the biggest uh, uh, failure is uh, when, um, when an organization sees the opportunity, but they are so incumbent, uh, things are going so well for them that they refuse to see it. A lot of examples, Arivan talked about quite a few of one, but there are two others which are very prevalent and you know the uh, team members who are becoming part of such initiatives in your organization, you'll hear people say that, oh, we got a platform, we're building a platform. But what hap is happening is one organization in one corner um, is um, one sub organization is kind of building something together. It's not really a platform, which is bringing the whole organization and ecosystem together. Uh, the other side is, uh, you know, uh, people kind of assume that since they know the domain, they know the market, they know what uh, platform ecosystem should look like. So many examples that Anirvan gave kind of uh, pointed at that. So, 
you know, uh, Peter Drucker said, behind every successful business, I say behind every successful platform, there is someone who took a courageous uh, decision. Uh, there is, um, you know, a need of all the product managers, developers, QA, BAs who are here to focus more on that ecosystem, the development of the ecosystem, see the opportunities of the platform rather than focus on these are the next set of features I'm going to put in my next um, release. Finally, uh, you know, what I want to stress out on is um, if you look at large enterprises, um, they have um, a data team, they have a backend team, uh, they have a, a you know, uh, enter, uh, you know uh, enterprise applications team, uh, they have these uh, apps team, digital engagement teams, and all of them kind of get money in the beginning of the year based on what the money they have asked for. And at the end of the year, they have said, okay, we gave you X number of million dollars, but did you build? They all have drawn, uh, you know, um, uh, they all have drawn boundaries around themselves and they quickly call out, hey, what I committed to, I've given up, you know, I've, I've given it to you. But what's happening is that you've ended up because of your funding structure, you ended up creating these uh, silos. So it's very important that platforms are built uh, together in a large organization with everyone being a stakeholder. Uh, I'm rushing through and finally, uh, the key takeaways uh, for all the CXOs, I mean, on the next one, for all the CXOs and uh, founders here, um, you know, make sure if you're investing in platform strategy, you have to give it some time to achieve relevance, a critical mass. Don't jump on uh, ROI immediately. Uh, finally, um, for all the team members here who are part of platform teams, be it QA, BAs, it's very important for you folks to push back and uh, force the exec and your own teams to think about the uh, ecosystem, the way we are creating value for everyone in that uh, ecosystem uh, and kind of build it uh, together. Uh, that's uh, what I wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, we got a few questions. Um, I think uh, Anirvan and me are looking at the QA. Um, we got quite a few questions. Anirvan, do you want to take, uh, we'll alternate. You can take the first one. Yeah, and there are a few upvotes uh, that people have uh, voted for. So we can start in that order itself. Sure. Sunita uh, is asking, when can a partner become a competition and how can we identify such uh, occurrences? Uh, yeah, they, a, a, anyone who is your partner today may be with, because of your uh, platform or just a general business relationship. Uh, as soon as they're successful, they'll, they'll become your competition. So there's nothing, they, they, there is no need to stress or fret about it in my opinion. Uh, you know, everyone uh, is uh, an, uh, a partner and everyone is a competition. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, from that perspective, uh, I, I'm not on too much of lookout for that uh, transition uh, point. There's another one, tri Travel Triangle would be classified as a platform. What about Make My Trip? It's not a platform either. Well, uh, Make My Trip does allow, um, Airbnb is a better platform than Make My Trip, but Make My Trip does allow um, insurance people to come up on their platform and offer, uh, while they're doing a little bit of gatekeeping, they kind of protecting those brands from users, uh, kind of protecting the users from seeing those brands. It's not the best of a platform, but uh, yeah, I, I think it is. Um, Anirvan, do you want to take the next set? Yeah, sure. So I think the next question is, please talk about the risks which need to be taken up during envisioning to costing. Uh, okay, it's the, the, the order is fluctuating. Okay. Uh, during envisioning to costing to competition and how the companies make sure they succeed in the competitive world. So I, I think um, there are a few different uh, levers here. So in terms of what makes for effective envisioning, right? So the first one is who is in the room? Because uh, a platform strategy is, I think, a much harder to localize. It's much harder to argue that, say, one team in one corner should come up with a platform strategy for the business. That's not to say that they cannot, but often because you're asking for significant changes in the way the organization allocates resources, how it looks at, let's say, the, the investment horizon and other things, it's very important that uh, the right people are in the room, right? So that's the first question, you know, uh, do, you, do you sort of have that mandate? The second question is, uh, what are your assumptions about the nature of value that you're trying to add? Often a platform is seen purely as a technical construct. 
So if I have effectively, let's say, uh, built my, I'm going to use the word product here briefly. Let's say I've got, okay, let's use the word solution instead. If I use a, built a solution in a way, which is let's say modular, reusable, uh, you know, then it's a platform. And in a technical sense, I think that is partly true, but you've got to also think about, uh, you know, what are my assumptions about my end users, their incentives, how am I creating value for them? And how do I test that, right? And there has to be enough, in a sense, expertise in the room for some of those things to come together. And that has to be then backed up by validation in the field. So um, envisioning uh, is complicated. Yeah, yeah sorry. The next one, yeah. Uh, I yeah, think. go for it. So uh, this is a very interesting one. Many companies are trying to disrupt, only few succeed. Is it difficult to predict future trends? It's, it's impossible to predict future trends. Um, we shouldn't try to do that. There is no way you can create a lasting business model. The companies that are actually succeeding are in the continuous journey of reinventing themselves and kind of going that path. I like the quote of the new CEO and um, chairman of IBM of all the companies who was saying that uh, we should all be in the business of uh, our next transformation. Um, I, th that seems to be the only thing that, that that's working there. Um, and the other question, talk a little bit about trust that comes over time, given insight, some examples, how different companies uh, tackle it, different companies may have. Yeah, tr trust, uh, there's the other uh, question also about the trust. Trust is, in my mind, the first uh, is predictability. Um, you are a social media platform, you will throw ads at me. So if you throw ads at me, I'm not surprised. You are giving me a free service, you will make money somehow. You will probably look at me, uh, my profile, and give me some targeted ad, charge something ex extra. A lot. However, if you as a social media is going to uh, you know, do something else, which I did not expect, uh, for example, you will look at all my friends uh, thing and what they are doing and kind of uh, do something, then I will not trust you. So the trust aspect is not uh, is more about transparency i think uh, that that's the best way be upfront with your policies and then stick to them uh, and you know make sure that every change is big enough i think we have uh, done with our time is, is that true yes, panel yep um, yeah. thanks dinkar anwar we can sure. uh, take up the next set of questions uh, we'll post it on slack channel so that you can um, answer there um, yeah. i'll just quickly ping the slack channel here for the audience. While she's uh, uh, doing that, the latest one, choose outcome metrics for developing a platform. We have, uh, ThoughtWorks has some very interesting opinions there. I'll see if I can share a thought paper on that uh, with you, uh, with you. Uh, thanks everyone. Um, uh, Thank you people. Thanks, uh, yeah, yeah, take care. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Dinkar and Anirvan. That was really insightful, um, especially the platform uh, definition that you had given, um, that they are sustainable and scalable mechanisms to add value to third party while capturing value for ourselves. Right? That was really insightful.